Hi all, and thanks again for joining me, Sarah, the Millennial Cynic, as we explore the issues of the day. Today, I want to talk a little bit about the advice that is often given to millennials and younger generations about how they should go about buying a home. This episode was prompted in particular by an article I read from the Irish Independent newspaper that popped up on both my Facebook and Twitter feeds. It's less so the article itself, as any millennial reading it would relate to the struggle being discussed. And it's more to do with the reactions and feedback seen in the comments on social media and the usual advice that is given ad nauseum to those struggling to buy a home. So the article itself, which I've linked in the description below, is about a 34-year-old young man from Dunleary, a nice area of Dublin, who is struggling to buy a home in his hometown. A familiar story, no doubt. He is single, which is hampering him even more, and he is finding himself being outbid on properties by tens of thousands of euro, despite having a good job and a sizable deposit saved. He feels he is being forced back into renting, even though rents are much higher than a prospective mortgage repayment. Single-income mortgage applicants face an uphill battle, and with a severe lack of housing and severe demand, it's no wonder this man, like many others, is struggling. He doesn't want to move out of Dublin, as his support network is there. His family, his friends, his social life, his job. Understandable concerns, and easily understood and related to by millennials the world over. Not so understood by older generations, unfortunately, though, and that's what I want to discuss today. The comments on social media about this article were divided into two camps. Those who can relate and want to see a change in housing policy to help those who are struggling to buy, and those who think the first camp are just lazy moaners. The first camp was not just made up of millennials, by the way. There were plenty from older generations agreeing that something needs to be done. Most of them parents of millennials who don't want to see their children struggle in such an unjust market. But it's the second camp that I want to focus on, and the typical advice they so often give to us lazy and entitled millennials. The first bit of advice is usually that we waste too much money instead of saving, and that if we just ditch Netflix and take away coffees, we'd be sorted. That little elbow grease and sacrifice is all that's needed. Now, I've spoken about this in a previous episode, and my opinion has not changed. Millennials would have no problem with short-term pain, like sacrificing Netflix and nights out and the likes, for long-term gain, like actually buying a home. But the problem is, the short-term pain is not so short-term. Prices continue to rise, so people are chasing shadows. If all it took was knuckling down for a few short years like previous generations did, then there'd be no one complaining. But it doesn't take a few short years. It takes a lot longer than that without any guarantees. And you cannot expect someone to put their entire life on hold for multiple years with the significant likelihood that you'll be no closer to your goals. It's just not feasible. Netflix is not the problem here. Now, the real meat of this episode is going to be focused on the next two pieces of advice that those struggling to buy keep hearing. The first is that if we can't afford Dublin, or any city or suburban area for that matter, that we should just move further afield. The second piece of advice is that if we don't want to move out of Dublin, then we should just upskill to command a salary that can pay for our chosen lifestyle. So let's take the first bit of advice first. Move out of Dublin. Move away from your hometown. Move to somewhere more affordable. Okay, some people, especially now that working from home is a very real possibility, would be perfectly happy to do this. Some people hate living in Dublin and long for rural life. That's fantastic. And I sometimes wish I was like that too. But I'm not. And so, it seems, are a great many others. If they weren't, then we wouldn't have this crazy demand for Dublin living. I'm a dub. I've lived here all my life. Dublin is my home. I should be able to afford to live in Dublin. And I should be able to buy in the part of Dublin that I actually live in, i.e. my home. I'm in my mid-thirties. I don't want to have to start over in a new place. My family and friends and support network are here. My doctor, who knows me, is here. My child's school is here. 
My favourite pizza place is here. My favourite Chinese takeaway is here. I know the staff and the local shops and restaurants enough to make small talk. I'm used to the transport links here and I'm mostly happy with them. I don't want to have to start from scratch in a new town, miles away, and learn all the quirks of a new town. My home is here. My life is here. What type of advice is this? It's the advice of others who have done it and can't see why other people might be different, might not want to relocate and start over, might not want to commute hours every day, might not want to leave their support network and the familiarity of their hometown. Some people are amazing at just uprooting their lives and starting fresh, and again, in some ways I envy them. But that is a choice people should be free to make and not a decision that is forced on them. It is not entitlement to want to be able to buy an affordable home in your hometown. The second piece of advice is a funny one because on the surface it seems like it makes a lot of sense. But if you follow it to its conclusion then problems start to appear and we'll talk about those in a bit. So the second piece of advice is to upskill. But what do they mean by upskill? Well, the IT sector is the path to follow going by the vast majority of advice that I see online. It usually follows a similar pattern that I'm sure is familiar to others. Someone bemoans the fact that they can't afford to buy where they live. They're told to upskill. To what, they say? What type of job would secure me a home? IT, they say. Every single time. But I know nothing about coding. Oh, fear not, there's more to IT than coding. But give it a go, you may end up loving it anyway. And on it goes. Again, on the surface this seems like good advice, because IT is more accessible than, say, finance or medicine, and you can make a good living from it. So let's follow both of these pieces of advice to their natural conclusion, shall we? Okay, so the two options are to upskill to IT, or to move out of Dublin. Right. Those who know IT isn't for them, because let's face it, IT isn't for everyone, and not everyone enjoys that line of work, those people move out of Dublin. Grand. Those who stay have upskilled to IT. Great. Now, let's just pretend and suspend reality for a moment that the new baseline salary for Dublin, since everyone is in IT or finance or medicine, miraculously doesn't affect house prices. And everyone who stayed, who are now in IT and the other top earning jobs, have bought a home. Brilliant. Fantastic. Now what? Well, now you can settle down and start a family. Only who's going to run and staff the creche that minds your child when you go to work? Because some, some have upskilled and work alongside you in IT. And the rest have moved out of Dublin. And you can bet your ass they won't be commuting long distances to work for shit pay. Nah, they'll just work local. Where are you going to send your kids to school? Because all the young teachers have either upskilled to IT, hey, maybe they run the in-house training, or they've moved out of Dublin because the pay scale for new teachers is dire. Okay, so, so maybe no kids then. Maybe, maybe a nice cup of coffee and a hot meal from the staff canteen will cheer you up. But, oh, wait, no staff? there either. Okay, okay, homemade lunches it is. Wait, no staff in Supervalue? Or Tesco? Or Dunn's? Or Lidl? Or Aldi? Oh, that's right. They've all either upskilled and now work alongside you, or have moved out of Dublin. No bar staff, no hotel staff, no chefs, no wait staff, no receptionists in the doctor's surgery, no delivery drivers, nothing. Nothing but wall-to-wall IT workers. Wow, this is, this is really great advice. Now, okay, I know what people are going to say here. They'll say that not everyone is going to follow these pieces of advice, so this scenario will never happen. Okay, I get that. But there really should be more than just those two options. And what if everybody did follow the advice? What if we all did because we are so sick and tired of being told it's our own fault and say, fuck it, let's take the older generation's advice? What then? Well, then this type of shit will happen. It's nonsense advice given by people who don't understand that it is not the fault of younger generations that they cannot afford a home. 
laziness? Unwillingness to make sacrifices? No. Unfairness. Unfairness caused by a system made by older generations for older generations to protect wealth. The advice needs to change and the approach needs to change. Just because something worked for you doesn't mean it will work for everybody else. A village, a town or a city cannot work with only the rich and only one type of industry. You need the CEOs, sure, you do. The ones whose companies drive innovation and progress, absolutely. But you also need the person who cleans the office of that same CEO and everybody in between. You need all walks of life and all types of workers. And every single one of them should be able to afford a home. Villages, towns and cities need to have a place for everyone. How does it make sense that the people who could afford the commute more are the ones who monopolise the local area? Surely there should be a place for everyone. Now, I'm not saying everyone should be able to afford a mansion, but every built-up area in the world should have a sliding scale of affordable housing for everyone. Plus, if more people live near their work, then that means less commuting, which means less emissions. So win-win. And to be honest, I find the type of advice that says if you work a minimum or low-wage job, then you should stop moaning and move to where you can afford more than a little hypocritical. When not that long ago, we were all clapping for our frontline and essential workers to show our appreciation. You know the nurses and hospital staff, the grocery staff and other essential retail staff, the ones who get paid very little, those people. I had hoped the pandemic would make us appreciate just how important all of these people are, but but no, who cares when there are property prices to protect, eh? And that right there is the real problem. People don't want others to succeed because that devalues their own accomplishments. Accomplishments that were easier to attain for previous generations. People don't want others to have what they have. People want to feel important. And this is a huge problem because people are more concerned with protecting themselves than helping others. Especially those who work in the quote unquote less worthy jobs than their own. Which is actually hilarious because another small bit of hindsight advice often heard by millennials is that we should have looked at trades, but we were too snobby for that, apparently, or something. What we really need is for the older generations to realise that times have changed and what worked for you won't work for us. And that not accepting that we should have to leave our hometown or a job we like is something that should be cheered and encouraged I've said it before and I'll say it again, we should be striving to make life easier for the next generation and not give them stick when we manage it or aim for it. Anyway, what other priceless pieces of advice have you heard from the older out-of-touch generations about why we're so bad at buying a home? Let me know in the comments below and if you've enjoyed this episode then please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel for more from me. Thanks for listening everyone. Slong a fold.